it could be clarified how we're following the bylaws um, or the, the state rules around making votes public. We consider the um, Facebook, we consider the Zoom meeting to constitute our meeting. The participants are visible to all people in the room at the time of the meeting. Hands being raised can be seen as so can be votes. This is not an endorsement sense. vote and not required by our bylaws to be recorded. Thank you it for that motion. It is a motion requiring a 60% threshold of voting members that are present, um, which is similar to an endorsement vote on like a ballot measure which we also do not need to record uh, the vote. If a member wished to have the vote recorded, a motion could be made to overrule the chair, a two thirds vote would then be required for us to do a recorded vote, uh, which could be done. Thank you for that explanation. I, I'd like to acknowledge Robin Torello has her hand up. Can I yeah, actually, I'll this is the point of order. Right before Robin speak, say if someone is intending to make that motion, I would ask that they do so now, not after, so that the um, secretary can prepare for that. It's not a simple gear to change at the end of the meeting. Robin. Okay, I could talk. Yes, yeah, sorry about that. Okay. I just don't want um, to have to. Can I, can I just have a caution that everybody abide by the code of conduct so that we are respectful of each other in this process? Um, and that if we want to speak again, as a reminder, uh, as Sally said, that we all put our hands up first. Thank you so much. Thank you, Robin, for that. I don't see any other hands up. Andy, are we ready to proceed forward? Um, I see no other hands, so I think we can move forward. Okay, Mama Tinga. All right, so the presentation of the charges by petition signers or their proxy. Are you prepared to make your presentation? Uh, yes, we are. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, would you like to go first, Phil? Uh, I will have Annie Karuga go first since Annie wrote the charges. Thank Annie you. Help charges. <laughs> yes. Uh, what, what was a group effort to be clear? Uh, my name's Annie. Use they them pronouns. I'm very much queer and also very much a proud member of this this committee. I'm going to to, to today be talking about how when Lily May was on our school board in Fremont, where I live. She voted against adding Harvey Milk Day to the calendar for our school district. And I'd also like to remind people that had Ms. May voted for adding Harvey Milk Day to our school district calendar, that motion would have passed and that would have happened. It was only one vote away. And just to provide some contextualization, this happened during a time when suicide for queer kids was skyrocketing. And there was organizing in the community around both the increasing amount of suicides and the murder of a trans girl named Gwen Araujo. Because of both of those things, there was community, a community effort in large part led by queer students to get school districts in our area to recognize Harvey Milk Day. Unfortunately, Lily didn't lend her support to this effort via voting for it. And I believe later she did vote to add Harvey Milk Day to our school district, but that was part of a broader consent agenda. And she did vote it down this first time. So I, I personally find it troubling that even with all this community support, community organizing by students, Ms. May was unwilling to, in this instance, lend symbolic support to queer students. I'll cede the rest of my time to the other petition signers, but before that, I just want to remind us all that we overwhelmingly, last month, two months ago now, I believe, you know, 30 zero, zero, said we did not want any homophobia in our party. So I think now is the time to be brave and to use these bylaws, because what, what was the point of passing that bylaws amendment if the collective us is unwilling to use them? 
This is the first time we're trying this. So inherently we're going to be setting a precedent. Let's set a good one. Let's set a brave one. Let's do the thing that we know is right to support queer people. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Annie. You took two minutes and 10 seconds. So. <laughs> and he's very efficient. Yeah, we have, we're probably um, going to take some turns here. So um, the next charge is, is that um, Mayor May put in her response and also in her response earlier um, that, well, let me get my notes, sorry. Anyway, that um, <clears throat> she she has people that you know support her that she does now support lgbtq plus rights um however you know on her page you see a picture of david halbert who is now our county supervisor who voted against um raising the pride flag when he was dublin mayor um and she also, and, and this was in her picture that showed that she supports LGBTQ plus rights, you know? So here she is hanging out with, you know, these people that definitely have directly voted against LGBTQ plus rights. And she's saying, oh yes, now, now I support them. Well, you know, she also supported Yang Shao in his most recent race uh, for city council, Yang Shao, uh, heavily campaigned for Proposition 8 um, and raised money for it. And which means she's supporting people who literally feel that my marriage should be illegal, that I shouldn't be able to be married to my wife. So um, to me, that's a huge deal. It's not a small deal. It's not something that's taking this too far. Um, and then the other thing is, uh, we found out recently she's having a fundraiser with Gary Houston, who is a Republican and is definitely anti-LGBTQ. So this is stuff that she's currently doing. And by the way, I was going to prepare even a bigger list. Oh, Guy Houston, sorry. But for some reason, the endorsements page has disappeared from her website. So I find that to be a problem. Where's the transparency? If you're gonna prove that you're pro LGBTQ+, you need to tell me what votes have you done since then? Not just, oh, you hired some gay people. Ooh, it's actually illegal to discriminate against gay people in California, so I hope so. And you know, what have you done? What have you actively done for this community after you've done so much harm to, I'm on the school board and I'm literally right now writing a, 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 you know, a policy for transgender students in New Haven Unified School District. Well, guess what? I know people who go to school in Fremont Unified School District where she was school board member who are afraid to come out, who feel bullied at school, who feel unsupported by the administration. This makes such a big deal to us and to LGBTQ children who are literally out there dying, getting kicked out of their homes, committing suicide, being murdered in hate crimes, being bullied at school. This is a very important issue that affects our children day to day and affects us LGBTQ plus adults. And, you know, I just ask you to please keep that in mind as you're listening to it. You know, if you're, if you're, if you're a straight ally, maybe you don't feel this every day the way that we do but it is very, very important. It is very important to our lives and to our livelihood. Um, and with that, I think Annie is going to talk about the other charge. Thank you, Mel. Um, Annie, you have um, 10 minutes left for your presentation. All right, um, just quick clarification. Originally, I believe that Lance was going to do it. Has, has there been a change of plans? I don't want to accidentally Cut oh. off, Lance. Sorry, Lance. I misunderstood our communications. Lance, are you are you ready to present on the other charge? Sure. Thank you. Great. Um, as a student that actually went to FUSD during the tenure that um, current Mayor May was uh, on the FUSD school board, um, I feel that it is really important to point out that this is not only just come from a place of fact, but also a place of 
lived experience uh, as an also LGBTQ member that went to FUSD. Um, so Mayor Maya did vote in opposition of LGBTQIA issues by voting as many queer inclusive parts of our AP English curriculum, as well as our just general curriculum. Uh, she did exclude multiple pieces of queer literature from the AP English curriculum that is taken by juniors and seniors in our high schools, uh, such as Bastards Out of Carolina, a book by a lesbian named Dorothy Allison, and Angels in America, a play about the AIDS crisis. Uh, Mayor May also uh, voted to exclude um, the former books multiple times, and though these subjects are hard to read and are difficult, um, we're, we're still experiencing in our just general core curriculum for all students, um, books such as Of Mice and Men and The Great Gatsby, which are written by straight white authors that also still have dark themes. Um, additionally, other approved books um, that are on the approved list for not only AP students, but for honor students and for general students um, have a much darker history and darker path in terms of talking about genocide and talking about things, including actually there are multiple references to recent wars uh, in our current set of curricula. Um, just as an example, um, you know, we have included um, actually things that have not been seen as traditional. Uh, for example, uh, Khaled uh, Oseni, uh, The Kite Runner, and A Thousand Splendid Sons have been actually recommended as part of the curriculum as of more recently. Um, and that is something where, you know, there is a person of color on finally on like the reading list, but the general reading list has been traditionally very straight white male, even though we have many different authors to pick from and many different novels to pick from in our curricula um, that are theoretically possible. Um, at this point in time, um, I'm not sure if it is appropriate for me to cede further time to contextualize the voting uh, to the former uh, FUSD trustee, um, Ann Crosby. So I will cede my current time left. There's five minutes and 50 seconds left. So should I go ahead? Yes, please. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Ann Crosby. I'm the chair of the Children's Caucus of the California Democratic Party and a retired Fremont School Board trustee who served with Lily May. In the last month since I made it clear that I would not be supporting this May, I have been asked, why are you being so mean to Lily May? She may not have supported LGBT community but she, when she was on the school board, but even Barack Obama changed his mind about gay marriage. To which I would ask, has Ms. May changed her mind? Did she endorse inclusive candidates for school board? Well, not in the last election. Um, she continues to support and take contributions from very conservative parts of our community who are not supportive of our LGBTQIA brothers and sisters. Ms. May voted against inclusive sex education that was essential for protecting the health of our LGBT students. She voted against books in it for an advanced placement class, which is a college course in high school that were inclusive and would have let our students know that they were seen and valued. And I don't know who could have sat through the vote on Harvey Milk Day as public speakers, who, the majority of which who are from outside of Fremont, uh, accused our LGBTQIA plus community of being sick pedophiles and still voted against Harvey Milk Day as our LGBT students sat in the audience crying. It was an incredibly impactful moment. And if she had wanted to have the calendar be further considered for other dates, she could have brought it back and still supported Harvey Milk Day. It is against my nature to be mean to anyone, but politicians must be held accountable for their track record. If you like Ms. May, you can and should welcome her to be involved in the Democratic Party in hopes that she will learn more about inclusion, spend more time with members of our community who can share who they are. It doesn't mean that you should be supporting her in her future uh, intentions of election. 
And I would say that now is the time we need to make it clear that this is not what we want in our leadership. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Madam Chair, how much time do we have left? You have three minutes left. All right, great. I do want to remind everybody that this is not a uh, legal trial. This is not a legal court. Um, and no one, you know, we're not licensed to practice law. So this is also not a criminal case. So this is not one of those issues where, you know, beyond a reasonable cause, you, reasonable uh, doubt, you need to be convinced, right? This is just looking for those patterns um, and, and seeing like, is this someone that we want um, in our Democratic Party? And I'll give the rest of my time to Annie. Thank you. I'd just like to close this out and conclude and re remind people as well that this isn't just one thing. We're not grasping for straws with you know one incident, even two instances. There have been many, many of which me and other, other queer members and allies have laid before you in the last 10 to 15 minutes. Again, not just one thing, right, Lily? May voted against Harvey Milk Day. That vote was one vote short after seeing the massive amount of community organizing that our largely queer students put into this. And she still voted, voted down Harvey Milk Day. She voted multiple times to exclude queer literature from AP English, which is again, a college level course. And she voted against queer inclusive sex education. That's three things when she was on our school board in Fremont. You're probably going to hear from either her or her allies that she's changed. So in 2018, she endorsed Sang Xiao, who we, we know campaigned heavily for Proposition 8, and Lily endorsed, endorsed Yang in, in 2018. That was not a long time ago, just a few days ago, an email for a fundraiser for Lily May with Guy Houston, who is a Republican and a former assembly member went out and Guy Houston voted against same-sex marriage at least three times. I found this information out through about five minutes of Googling. It's not hard information to find. And it wasn't like those votes were controversial because two of those three votes where Guy Houston voted against same-sex marriage passed. So again, just, just to wrap this up, this is a pattern of behavior stretching back a long time. Yes, starting when Ms. May was on our school board, but continuing today, be, continuing through to today because of endorsements like of Yang Xiao and of fun, fundraising things such as this email that went out just a few days ago. It unfortunately doesn't appear that Ms. May has changed very much. Annie, you impressed me. You're right on time. Thank you. Okay, thank you all for your presentation. And uh, now we're able to have uh, Lily May give a 15 minute response. Andy, any clarification on that? No, we're right on track. Thank you for the opportunity to come and speak with all of you this evening. Um, I wanted to share as a first generation Chinese American, like many in my generation, family and community, not party partisanship was the lens through which I participated in public life. I became involved in the PTA as a parent to ensure my children had a good education. And that is what guided me to join the school board. I was frequently the only non-white person in the room when I entered and creating a space for a diverse community has always been a calling of mine. That calls for reflection and compromise, and many times a slower process than anyone would prefer. And I wanted to take the, uh, the opportunity to address some of the charges. Um, regarding Harvey Milk Day, historically before my tenure on the board, the Fremont Unified School Board had not supported any individual recognition days aside from our federal holidays. And when a trustee proposed that the district add a day recognizing Harvey Milk, such several of us were supportive of doing so, but also adding other inspirational leaders, 
such as Fred Karamatsu, another Bay Area native. That proposal was also unfortunately rejected. The board discussion became a flashpoint as noted from out of town activists bust into this meeting. And that is one of the few meetings that I recall where we had a police presence and armed. Um, there were many significant threats made with kids in the room and the board decided to decline naming any days beside beyond what we already had. We took a subsequent opportunity to recognize local heroes, including Harvey Milk and local heroes like Fred Korematsu. And I was proud to support that vote. Um, oh, one second, Miss May, I stopped the timer. Uh, there's okay. been a request to see if you could go be on camera so that we could see you. Am I not on camera? No, you're not. We oh, just see a flat I don't know. square. I don't know what happened. I'm trying to look at my other screen at the same time, so. We, we, we appreciate it, thank you so much. I'm gonna, no, go, I, on, I'm gonna go on mute. And, I'm sure, um, I, I didn't stopped, know that. I stopped it's, the clock. None of this went against your 15 minutes. Okay, well, I'm, I'm still happy with the first part and I just wanted to share that when it comes to children in the room at that time and the type of vitriol that we were receiving um, was so negative that for me as a mother in serving on the school board, I mean, my own daughter asked me, has anyone ever shot a school board member? And so it's very sad for me to think that that would have to be a thought for my child. And um, certainly as one person serving in the community, you'd want all people elected and others to be safe. Um, so regarding Harvey Milk Day, also his, uh, I, th I think that that was important for us to be able to honor that and we've been able to add that. And I know that we've been able to celebrate that in the community. Regarding books, in the school, it is simply untrue that I voted to ban any books. No books have been banned. What I didn't vote is to retain it as a mandatory book. Um, Angels in America and Bastard out of Carolina were available as supplemental books, not as required texts. I also wanted to note that in that same conversations when we had the book for supplemental review, I also voted to include Laramie Project to the reading list where it was not a mandatory book. I'm not sure as to why The Great Gatsby or The Color Purple were referenced as they were not discussed and were part of a supplemental reading list that was part of the school district at that time um, and are automatically authorized for by voice vote unless someone wanted to pull them. Um, so no vote was taken to have that removed. Um, regarding the photo with David Halbert, I'm also unsure as to why the charge was levied. The photo was referenced when he was the mayor of Dublin and we were in a group picture for mayors against LGBTQ discrimination. And it was taken um, to represent the Bay Area mayors who were there and um, we had walked in the Boston Pride Parade. And so that was at that time. And there were other mayors from the Bay Area in the picture. Um, the only issue I've heard referenced against him is that he didn't vote for the LGBTQ flag um, in 2019, but then voted for it later that year. Also at that time, the local party I know endorsed another candidate in 2020 in the same city who had the exact same voting record. I hope you will provide me with the same grace for votes I have changed as well, given that they were over a decade ago. Um, so since 2010, I also feel it's necessary for those who did not have a chance to read my statement about my pro LGBT votes and actions over the last decade. It's important to note that during my tenure as Fremont mayor, the city council has unanimously issued proclamations honoring Harvey Milk Day, Pride Month, and Transgender Days of Remembrance. Also under my mayorality, Fremont has flown the rainbow flag over city hall to show our support 
for LGBTQIA plus rights. I've actively recruited and promoted and celebrated our collective contributions to breaking remaining glass ceilings in Fremont as inspirational examples for our city and future generations, including hiring LGBTQIA members at the highest levels of the city government for city manager and police chief, among others, and appointing members of LGBTQIA plus mem community members to our various city boards and commissions. I've also been proud to endorse or donate to local LGBTQIA plus candidates, including Emeryville Council Member John Bowders, Assembly Member Evan Lowe, El Cerrito Mayor Pro Tem, Gabriel Quinto, Alameda County Superior Court Judge Tara Flanagan, Alameda County Superior Court Judge Candidate Mark Fix, among others. I hope the committee committee will consider my rich history of support of LGBTQIA plus rights today. And I look forward to speaking with all of you. I also wanted to let people know on the question about the fundraiser. Um, it is being organized by someone else in another city and I had no uh, knowledge that Guy Houston was invited. So I just learned about that now from you. Um, so I am aware there is an event for me coming up but I'm not aware that he was one of the people invited. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. You took seven and a half minutes of your 15 minutes of allotted time. So I, I wanted to, I don't know if that question and answer is something that you would also put in that time frame. I also do have other speakers that I, do know have joined this call this evening. Would it be appropriate for them to speak now or since I haven't been through this process or? Do you it... like to have someone who's on the call now speak on your behalf as part of your defense that they'd be more than welcome to take the remaining time that you have? Or you okay. can split that between two or three people? Sure, and if it's a concern, I'm happy to cancel the event since I I'm not even aware of it right now. I haven't talked to them about the event. Um, let's see, for my speakers on the call, I know I have, I'm looking for. Um, Lily, I'm here, do you want me to speak? Sure, thank you. All right, um, I wanna speak in support of Lily May. Um, first of all, I'd like to say I have a perfect record of support for the LGBTQ plus community supported many gay candidates. Um, further, I signed the papers for my daughter's marriage to her wife. Um, and I, you know, I, I've heard Lily's explanation as to why she did not vote the first time uh, for that uh, um, recogni recognition of Harvey Milk Day. I would have voted for it. Further, I supported candidates who uh, uh, at that time who were running against her. However, over the last five years, um, and frankly, over the latter part of her period in the school board, I find her record fine. Uh, people can and do change. Uh, Mayor May and Yang Xiao have voted with the gay community on recognition. Um, Lily has flown the rainbow flag, hired a gay city manager, worked well with a gay police chief. Uh, during, the, during my entire nine years in the assembly, I've been on the public safety committee. We've passed many reforms on the grounds that people can and do change. We've shortened sentences by banding mandatory minimums, eliminated sentence enhancements. The shorter the sentence, in fact, the more likely is a person is to successfully reenter society. We've made it easier for the formerly in, in, um, incarcerated to get jobs. Under the assumption that people do change, we've banned the box on employment applications, the box being the box that you had to check if you'd ever committed a crime. Now they, they, they have to interview you first and then they can ask you those questions. But we've made it, tried to make it easier and easier for people who are willing to change to reenter society. 
On all these reforms, most Republicans have been in opposition. Once you offend, they do not believe people can change. My fellow progressive Democrats and I on the, uh, in the assembly feel differently. We think people can change. We think people should have second chances. Or do we become like Republicans where any deviation gets you rid out of the party forever? They actually rid out of the party their uh, minority leader because he cooperated with the governor on um, uh, cap and trade uh, policy. This is, this is something the Republican Party does. We believe people can change and when they've changed, we should accept them for what they are. Many of you do not believe that Mayor Lily May should be the choice of the party for state Senate, which is fine. Um, and when we know what the Senate district is, and by the way, it's not at all clear, there might not even be an election in two years because we might become an odd number district instead of an even number district in uh, Fremont. Uh, if there is an election, there's no guarantee that, well, frankly, there's guarantee it won't look like the Senate current district because it's redistricting. Now, when we know who she's running against, which may or may not be Aisha Wahab, I kind of doubt it will be. I think the districts are going to look much more like they did 10 years ago when Hayward was not part of a district with Fremont, but who knows? None of us know at this point. The point is, there'll be a time when you can vote to endorse someone other than Lily May. To decide that now, when she has shown a desire to change, when in fact you are coming up with charges of things that she didn't even, wasn't even aware of. And further, you know, Guy Houston was uh, someone I worked uh, against and someone I worked to defeat. On the other hand, who knows what his positions are now? Every Republican was voting against gay marriage at that point. Many of them are now in support. I don't know where he is. The point is, Lily didn't even know he was part of the, uh, the fundraiser. So again, what I'm asking is, if you don't like, if you don't think we should endorse Lily May, fine, we'll have a chance when we know who the candidates are. But right now, I find bringing up these, these charges from 10 years ago, uh, not appropriate because she has changed, in my opinion, and she has shown that she is supportive. And I think we should go from there. So I'll ask this body to look at the last years of Willilly, uh, to take her at a word of where she is, and to go on from there. I ask you to vote no on the resolution. Thank you. Thank you. Could I get a time check? Please. Yes, Mayor May, uh, you've used 12 minutes and 34 seconds with my with my math. That means two minutes and 26 seconds. I know also um, we had a statement sent in from Gabe Quinto, and I don't know, um, Assemblymember Quirk, could you read it? I think I sent it to you too. I don't know if you have your phone, but if not, I'm sorry. Are you on mute? Who is this uh, from? Gabe Quinto. Let me search my emails. Um, it was a text sent to you, Phil. Oh, a text. Yes. Oh. Oh, okay. Uh, please kindly read this statement. Let me pull it up. Uh, uh, to members of the Alameda County Democratic Central Committee, as an LGBT uh, elected official and proud Filipino American, I know what it is like to face discrimination and bigotry in many areas of my life. That's why I was shocked and dismayed to see the charges members of this body have made against Mayor Lily May. I support the spirit of the Alameda County Democratic Central Committee recent bylaw change and agree that those who currently vote against LGBTQ people and those who have not remedied past actions should be held to account. But the charges against Mayor May as written do not reflect that. They take decade old votes, some of which have been remedied and others of which have been mischaracterized as evidence of bigotry. 
while ignoring the rich history of Mayor May's proactive pro-LGBTQ actions over the last decade, including today. The sole charge directed to her that is not from a decade ago is that she appeared in a photo with then Mayor David Albert. Ironically, the photo was from a mayor's against LGBTQ discrimination event. The charge against Albert that he refused to vote to raise the gay pride, the pride flag in Dublin in 2019 before voting to do so weeks later is a record shared by current mayor Melissa Hernandez, who this body endorsed just last year. Let me be completely clear, Lily May is not anti-LGBTQ. I would never ever support her if she were. Like many local elected officials, Leah's, Lily has had to balance the needs of many diverse communities in her time in local elected office. This bylaws change in the process of holding anti-LGBTQ candidates and elected officials to account is important enough to get right. If there are those on the committee who support another candidate, there is a process to ensure that candidates are endorsed by the Democratic Party, but the party should not start a process that would lead to removal of its own members on the charges leveled here. We should celebrate when local leaders remedy past actions and embrace those who can be bridge builders to our diverse communities. Lily May is a leader. I urge the delegates voting today, particularly my fellow LGBTQ delegates to vote no. And that's from El Cerrito Mayor Pro Tem, Gabrielle Quinto. And I agree with what he has written. Okay, the 15 minutes. Um... Time is over. We went over a little bit, but we were able to finish the, the, <clears throat> the message from Gabe Kinto. Okay, Andy. So the, it says here, clarifying questions may be asked in the chat function and may be posted by the chair at this time at the chair's discretion. Do we have anybody out there that needs a clarifying question asked and answered from Mayor May or the parties that brought the, the charges forward. Madam Chair, the clarifying questions are for you, not for the um, sites. Oh, sorry. Are there any clarifying questions about process or points of information? Royal raised his hand. Hi, Royal. Thank you. Um, I have a clarifying question with regards to the actual um, bylaws that we that we passed and I wanted to see if at some point um, after all the parties have um, had the opportunity to speak I just want clarification on there was and I and I am on the bylaws committee so I, I was a part of you know um, you know at least in in some of the meetings um, helping to work through some of this stuff but I believe there was some provision at the end of it around if the person, renounces their behavior or something. I'm not clear on what that was specifically. And I don't know if everyone on the call is. Um, so I just wanna make sure that that um, at least that is somehow known by everyone present, if possible. Uh, Madam Chair, I can answer that question. Thank you, Andy. The, um, Reference that's being made by Mr. Roberts is, oh, Roberts, Roberts rules, that works out well. Uh, <laughs> sorry, it's been a day. Um, the reference being made is to the secondary part of the bylaw around this situation. It does not apply to tonight's decision or to the hearing we're having. That's simply that if this bylaw is invoked, members of this committee would then be forbidden from endorsing a candidate found to have violated the section of the bylaws. And so um, the, the reference that Royal's making is that if a, if a member has made an endorsement that violates these rules, then rescinding their endorsement prevents any future process. But that's a, that's a secondary process that is not uh, part of tonight's hearing. Thank you, but it was a, it was a different provision in there. I, I, I'll, I'll see if I can pull it up on the computer if there's anyone else, but it was a different part that was embedded 
into the first part around, you know, the, the number of people required to bring the charge. And then um, I'll, I'll see if I can pull it up. So I just wanted to mention real quickly, though, I see in the chat, people are asking about my campaign team, and I don't have Guy Houston working on my campaign team. My consultant is Catherine Liu of Lou Edwards, and um, my fundraiser is uh, Connie and Sanders Emerson, and the other people on the campaign team are not um, related. I've, I've got Benjamin E. helping me as a local campaign manager and friend, but I have not... Um, done any work with Guy Houston. I met him at an event and he's offered to talk to me. That's about it. That's all I know of right now. So I'm not sure. I know that I have a friend up in Dublin who is trying to host an event. Sure, can me. I request a point of order? Yes, Lily. Just that I believe both sides have exhausted their speaking and all parties are equally able to answer any questions that they see in the chat. In the chat. Uh, thank you, Sully. You're absolutely right. I don't see any other questions that are consistent with the spirit of process or points of information about the process. Given that, Andy, do you want to um, to talk about how the speakers are going to line up, sign okay. up? Okay. Um, not everyone has the ability to do um, to do two different kinds of hands. So I'm gonna just take a list. Um, if you would like to speak in support, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask folks who wanna speak in support to raise their hand. I'll write those hands down in the order I see. And then I'll ask those hands to be lowered and for folks to raise their hand who wanna speak in defense. Um, and I'll write those down and then we can alternate. Um, so if you would like to speak in support of the charges, um, please raise your hand. Okay, you can put your hands down. Uh, if you'd like to speak against the charges in defense of a no vote, in defense of the mayor, um, please raise your hand. Preference will be given to members of this committee. For the, for the point of process, I'm not considering people who have already spoken for the speakers list. We will come back to those folks if they, if there are not eight speakers who have not yet spoken, but I am making a note of your names. Okay, I have. Are there any members of this committee wishing to speak on this issue? I just want to make sure I have the other hands written down. I just want to make sure if there's any committee members who wish to speak that they have. Okay. Everyone can go ahead and put their hands down. I think we have enough for the first couple rounds and then we'll ask again. Um, the speakers list will be um, Solly Alpert first. And then um, I have Shabana um, after that. And it's two minutes each, and you don't have to take the full two minutes. Correct. Uh, I, I'm sorry. I need to. Can, I don't know how to do this as far as procedurally, um, but I just need to call out a falsehood given by Mayor May. I have the proof <laughs> that Guy Houston is involved. There's there's a flyer for the fundraiser, and at the bottom it has. Lily May for State Senate 2021, F -F FPPC number 1437736 printed on the flyer. That means that this flyer was printed by um, 
Mayor May's campaign. So, I mean, if you have a different FPPC number, please let us know. But I, I, I think in this hearing, we need to have true transparency. I don't think that's proof that she knew. Uh, and point of clarification. All right, out folks, of order. If you speak out of order, you're going to get muted the rest of the meeting, and I will not call on you. So we're not going to play this game. And I'm going to be mean. Um, so everyone, please mute yourself. I'm going to unmute people only as they are to speak. We're not doing crosstalk, but we're going to be here all night. Love you. The speaker's list is Solly Alpert. Uh, was that an invitation to speak? Sorry, Andy, could you just clarify, were you reading the whole list or should I start now? Solly, you may speak, yes, sorry. Oh, no, no problem. Um, so hi folks, um, this is Solly Alpert speaking. Uh, only in my own behalf as an individual. Uh, many of you know me, but some of you may not know that I grew up in San Francisco to lesbian mothers and I attended public school in San Francisco. And, you know, even in San Francisco, in liberal San Francisco with adults in the school system who supported queer folks and who understood those issues, I still, even someone who wasn't queer myself, but with queer parents, you know, had uh, uncomfortable questions asked of me. And I don't know if I would say discrimination, but certainly certainly felt different. And I can only imagine how I would feel if I lived in Fremont, where I knew that there were not just adults, but leaders in my community who weren't standing up for me and who didn't listen while I said that I was feeling uh, separate and less than. And so, you know, I, I have to admit, initially when, when I saw these rule changes being proposed, I was skeptical. I thought that we were gonna be uh, punishing people for conduct that they may have changed in the past. Uh, but I think that there's no greater evidence for the lack of real change on behalf of Mayor May than her own statements. I went through her written statement and I listened to her statement today. And one thing is completely absent. She doesn't use the word apology. She doesn't say, I'm sorry. There's no accountability for the real pain that she caused real people. It's well and good. You know, it's very difficult in these kinds of proceedings. What we're trying to do is analyze someone's heart. And that's a very hard thing to do. You know, it's, it's difficult to know what someone believes in their heart of hearts. And so we have to look at what their actions say. And what Lily May's actions have shown is a consistent pattern of doing what is easy and not what is hard. And we know that the, that the you know, attitudes around queer people in our community and in our party have changed a lot over the past 10 years. And that it's a lot harder to be openly homophobic in your actions now than it used to be. And so I, what I would hope to see but haven't seen from Mayor May is a real recognition of the harm that she caused real students who saw her on the dais say, no, your pain is not worth taking a stance on. And that I am not gonna do the bare minimum of making a symbolic gesture of recognizing Harvey Milk Day in order to show you that you are welcome. I haven't heard an apology for that. And I think that if she really had changed, just like her partisan description, which she seems to change as is convenient, if she really had changed, I would have thought that there would have been a little bit more sincerity in her statements and a little bit more accountability for what her action caused real people. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Sally. Uh, I would like to update process. If you would like to speak and you're not on a speaker's queue yet, just please say in the chat um, if you'd like to speak for or against, and I will add to the lists. Um, I think everyone who needs to speak is on the computer. If you're not, um, I'll ask in a few minutes for people on the phone. Um, the next speaker against is um, Shobana Ramathardi. It is Shobana Ramamurthy. Thank you for giving me an opportunity. I'm a progressive Democrat. I've lived here in Fremont for more than 25 years. And I've raised two kids who attended Fremont Unified. And I have known uh, Lily since she was a PTA member. And uh, today I'm speaking uh, against this thing, um, charges, because as a Democrat to see this, I'm really, uh, it's heartbreaking that we have become a party that will penalize people for their actions that happened a decade ago. We are supposed to accept people when they change. And, uh, you know, we are the party of big tent. We are not Republicans. We are not going to exclude people from our party. Lily May has consistently as a mayor proved 
with a proclamation, with raising the rainbow flag, with supporting the gay parade. She has been there for us to go, go back and say, no, 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 what you did 10 years ago, you're going to be, we are, I feel that that is so wrong. Our own party did not approve the gay marriage until the summer of 2012. So what are we going to do? We change and we accept people as they change too. So this is against all our democratic party values and beliefs, this charade that's happening to uh, accuse a person who, I, I agree, pain was caused. I'm an ally. I have always been a staunch ally all my life. There was never a moment of doubt for me, but not everyone was at that same, same path. People slowly evolve. That includes our party. That includes our presidents, our big party leaders. So when we are okay with that, it is so wrong to target one person and to penalize that person. You don't want to support her in her Senate race. That's your right. You don't want to endorse her. That's your right. But to bring these charges, I, I am ashamed that my party is doing this. Thank you, Shabana. Your Thanks. time is up. Okay. Thank you for letting me speak. Uh, the next two speakers will be John or Sybil Smith or John and Sybil Smith. You can each have two minutes if you'd like. And then on the other side, um, Benny Lee and Larry Sweeney. Okay. I'll... Uh... I'll kick this off then, Andy. So uh, I served on the Human Relations Commission in Fremont for a number of years until Lily became mayor. Uh, during that time, we uh, every year supported the Gay Pride Parade by putting on a float and a lot of the local politicians would come out and walk in the parade and, and show their support of Gay Pride. I never saw Lily show up at any of those, uh, any of those times. To the event that Guy Houston and Sherry Hugh, I believe, is uh, putting on for Lily, this was a uh, email that was sent out within the last day or so. Uh, it has clearly Lily's picture on the on it, and it has Guy Houston as the the main host, and it's asking for other people to be a host. I don't think that Lily has changed for all of what she said. Uh, I think she continues to be the person that she was and is, and uh, I'm, I support the charges uh, that are being brought today. Thanks. Thank you, John. Um, up next is, <laughs> I think I said Raj, but if not Larry, whichever one you would like to go first. Sure, I'm happy to speak. Uh, sorry. Uh, good evening, uh, Democrats. Uh, I've been a lifelong Democrat. Uh, very proud to be a part of this party. I uh, worked my way up. <clears throat> and, you know, a friend of mine said that Democrats are just nicer people. Uh, we're not mean like those Republicans. And so my concern, and even myself, I haven't, most of my political career, I have not supported Lily May. Uh, in fact, I've been on opposite sides of her on many occasions. And, um, what, what my big concern is I'm concerned about these uh, charges. You know, are we, gonna, are we gonna be filing charges all the time? Are we gonna be, you know, doing witch trials or, you know, what's, what's going on here? If we don't like Lily May, then we have a right to vote against her at the endorsement meeting. And I suspect that most likely she will not get the support at the endorsement meeting. Uh, but I'm concerned that we have a rising Asian American population in Alameda County. In fact, Asian Americans comprise the largest group of uh, people in this county, and they're continuing to grow. We'll find out in 2020. Uh, as far as the makeup of this committee, we only have a handful of Asian Americans. And so what kind of message are we sending the people when we take one of their most well-known Asian American leaders and we make an example out of her. And uh, this is not the way to bring in more Democrats. We want to uh, make our county more blue. We need to get more people into the party. And we are the big tent party. We are the inclusive party. 
the party that allows to allows you to work with everyone. And so um, all that I say is that, um, you know, people uh, do change and people can evolve. And I think we have to take her at her face value. I have seen her uh, closely over the past few years, and I do feel that she has made great strides um, and she has showed to me at least that she's inclusive. Um, again, you may not agree with her, you may not like her, but I just uh, object to this process that we're doing to uh, bring charges and Thank, uh, thank you, Raj. Your two minutes are up. Thank you. Uh, up next, we have Victoria Fierce, and then it will be Benny Lee. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Sorry. I just having weird things with my audio today. Um, hi. Yeah. So uh, I'm here in support of the charges. Um, I think that Soli actually made a really fantastic argument earlier that I want to also echo in that, you know, we are weighing essentially someone's soul and their heart. And, you know, we don't, we can't know what they're feeling. We can't know what they're thinking deep inside. However, all we have are the actions to judge them by. And here, you know, again, Soli made a really great point is that in the time between these things happening, and you know, a lot of these speakers are talking about things that happened 10 years ago. Right, okay, fine. But in those 10 years, has she apologized for this? Has she owned up to it? And I don't think the answer there is yes. I don't think that I've seen that from uh, Mayor May. And you know, a lot of people seem to be getting hung up on this in, the, in these comments about this whole endorsement process. And I would like to ask people to kind of let that go because this isn't about endorsements. This is a bit more than just endorsements. This is a bit more than local politics. This is about, you know, look around the room. Right now, you have a whole bunch of really angry, upset queers. All of the queers, for the most part, are here saying, we are offended. This is not what we are. This is not the Democratic Party. And we have to do something about it. And why isn't there a single you know, queer person who's coming up forward and saying, actually, I'm here to defend uh, Miss May? Well, maybe look around the room, maybe think about why there might be something unifying all of us queers, all of us LGBTQ people, and what we have in common that as we are upset about. And here, you know, a simple apology would be great. An apology would have been lovely anytime in the last 10 years before today. Queers and allies. Yes, thank you, Royal. And, you know, we haven't seen that. And, you know, I've been canceled myself, too. I've said really stupid shit on Twitter, but I've also apologized for it. And I've tried my best to make up for these sorts of things. And this isn't what I'm seeing from Mayor May on here. And, you know, as a queer, as a trans person myself, you know, I know how to see through things. I can read past the bullshit and I know what's happening and I can see when somebody is genuine about it and when they're not genuine about it. And this is why I'm supporting these charges is I'm not seeing this genuine kind of apology. And I don't, you know, I don't want people to feel shitty about this in the end, you know, make amends. We can work on this. We can figure this out, make apologies. We can move past this. But right now, this isn't what I'm seeing. And again, you know, poor choices have been made in people's history and we shouldn't cancel people for things that happened 10 years ago. But we're not talking about things that happened 10 years ago. We're happening about things that haven't happened in 10 years. We're talking uh, about a lack of apology. Thank, thank, thank you, you, Victoria. You're at about three minutes now. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Um, Benny Lee. Thank you. You know, uh, you know, I'm, um, you know, I I'm in support of Lily. Now, first and foremost, number one, right? Uh, when we talk about uh, LGBTQ history, I remember when we had to vote on uh, raising the flag and it was unanimous in the San, San Leandro City Council on 2013 when the uh, Supreme Court was deciding on it. It was unanimous, it was not a question. When, um, uh, when I got off the council in 2020, I remember a hateful person said something very hateful to our, uh, to our, um, our council member, Victor Aguilar. We all called him out on it. I called him out on it. And I said, Victor, I love you. You are my brother. So I, I want to make that clear that, you know, we support the LGBTQ com uh, community. Now, what I've heard uh, from Lily, and I have to discuss this, is number one, she's talked about inclusion, right? Uh, what I heard from that 2010 vote 
was that it was not uh, is not about inclusion. It was just only about one issue and not adding on the other issues. And I think it's important that we need to be inclusive. You know, Asians are getting attacked right now, right? And I'd like to see more uh, support on trying to battle some of those issues. You know, inclusion inclusivity is very important. But you know what's more important is being welcoming. Now, I met Lily May in 2014, and she's always been well welcoming. In fact, when she got on the uh, when she got on the council and she went to the National League of Cities, she met a lot of folks. She was the first one to bring a lot of folks together. She introduced me to a lot of folks, in, including uh, many of the LGBTQ elected elected mayors. So, if she is against this, I, I don't see how that 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 could be. You know, um, I, I saw a lot of uh, messages that. Uh, criticizing Republicans, you know, and Republicans should be criticized, but there are Republicans who support the Democratic Party. I could tell you that some of our state officials, Betty Yee, Fiona Ma, uh, Rob, uh, Rob Bonta, have gotten lots of money from CCN, who is big, uh, who is a Republican, but he is one of the biggest supporters of the Democratic Party. So I want you to understand is we should be inclusion. And I agree with what was said. We need to have a bigger tent. Thank you, Honorable Lee. You're over two minutes. Thank you. Great. Um, I, Austin, Marie, Gilmore, I have you both on the speakers list. Um, so unless you have points of information, you don't need to keep your hands up. Um, the speakers list will now be Bobby Lopez, followed by Larry Sweeney, and then Martha Krieger, followed by um, John Marchand. Do I go, Andy? Yes. Thanks. Hi, everybody. Bobby Lopez. Um, you know, I was reflecting on this vote tonight and looking at our Democratic Party platform from the state. And it, to me, it's very clear what the platform says. It says that our role is to fight for all people, to live with dignity and equality. And as California Democrats, we will and this is from the platform, support legislation and policies that protect LGBT people from violence with added attention to transgender individuals. That's what we're saying as a state. While I appreciate Mayor May's statement, actions do speak louder than words. And while I hope the mayor is in fact on a path to change, I do believe this charge is still based very much on actions to date. And I hope that this is a, this is a moment of reflection for that, but I, I, I really do wanna speak to the harm um, you know, the LGBT community is in crisis. I just, you know, a report just came out from the Trevor Project, um, which surveyed 35,000 LGBT youth from 13 to 24, and 52% of transgender non-binary youth seriously contemplated killing themselves in 2020. More than half of them actually said it would be better to be dead than to live with the rejection, isolation, and bullying that they experience in schools and the targeting by politicians pushing anti-trans legislation. To me, this is not a political disagreement, but a matter of survival. I am a parent to a gender fabulous child. And to me, it's very hard to hear Lily May, Mayor May's role in the school district because I see day every day, my child's vulnerability within a school. And she is in a very supportive school environment. But I think to myself, the role and the power of a school board member to have and to impact very vulnerable children and to not have a school board where people have your back, it's, it's very disconcerting. Um, and I know that we have a lot of communities in crisis. In Alameda County, we're rich in diversity. And I really wanna avoid us pitting ourselves communities in discussion, but really kind of looking at the intersectionality and maybe moving forward to think about how we can really frame things more and lifting up all the communities currently facing hate and aligning ourselves to that because we do need to align the forces of hate that are greater than us. Um, and I do hope for growth from the mayor. But tonight, my message, my message is that politicians and people in power have a certain capacity to really change and frame and move policy in a way that impacts whether people live or die. And to me, that's why while this was a difficult decision, it wasn't because I felt the best thing to do was really to, to enforce that we are about protecting the life and safety of, of the most marginalized people within our community and within our party. Thank you. Thank you, Bobby. We're at two minutes and 37 seconds. <laughs> Larry Sweeney. Uh, thank you. Thank you for allowing me this uh, courtesy to be able to take a few minutes and uh, share my support 
for Lily and, and uh, uh, asking you to vote no on this resolution. Uh, just to reiterate and, and back up what Lily said, uh, Fremont Unified School District, has an, and I'm speaking tonight just as myself, not uh, representing any group, uh, Fremont Unified School District has never banned any books, never. We have been asked a few times to put books on required reading lists, and we have voted against that. But those books are still available in the library, and students are still available, are still allowed the opportunity to write book reports on these books. So to, to share that Fremont has ever banned books, or especially the two books in question that we've heard about tonight, would be an inaccurate uh, representation or a misrepresentation of the facts. Uh, regarding Harvey Milk and the opportunity to recognize Harvey Milk Day, it was said from the podium at that time that it was very limiting to recognize one person when there's so many other people that are just as deserving. People like Fred Karamatsu or Rosa Parks or Susan B. Anthony or Crispus Atkus or, or Brown versus the board, so many different uh, opportunities that we want to be more inclusive. And that's why we said we we're going to move forward because it wasn't fair to just take one person out. We want staff to come back as soon as possible with a calendar. And if you look at the Fremont Unified School District calendar, you will see that every almost every day has observances. Every month tries to capture all the celebrations of all our various groups and events that make up the culture that is Fremont. Um, it tried to serve the purpose, this, this inclusion, of righting so many wrongs. And Lily was a whole hard supporter of it. As far as sex ed, it needs to be noted that Lily voted in favor of the sex ed that was eventually adopted. However, sex education curriculum has come to the board that, as you might know, it comes from different, different groups, uh, support different ideas, but the groups that support it more than just sex ed to include mental health issues and bullying and cyberbullying and positive self-image and uh, socio suicide prevention, you know, iterations, resources, and signs those were voted down by the majority of the board. So those were not included. And I think we all know today that those need to be included. Lily was a- Thank you, thank you Mr. Sweeney, your time is up. Thank you. Um, we have a few more speakers. I wanna clarify with our members how we want to proceed. At this point in time, we, I mean, Truthfully, with the exception of one speaker, we've only had one con speaker who is a member of this committee. Um, we have many members of this committee on the pro side. I'd like to take a temperature check of our members if we'd like to continue to allow members of the public to speak or if we would like to um, allow those members on the speaker's queue to speak first. Um, those who wish to prioritize members, please raise your hand. And then I'll ask those who wish to continue alternating to raise their hands. Okay, I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, twelve hands in favor of prioritizing members if folks could lower their hands. Um, those in favor of continuing alternating um, with members of the public, please raise your hand. So I see that as 12 to two. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and 12 to three um, that clearly the consensus of the committee is to prioritize members on the speaker's queue. Um, so Martha Krieger, uh, followed by Austin Tam. Thank you, Andy, and uh, thank you, committee. Um, my name is Martha Krieger. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and I am on unceded Ohlone land in Fremont. I am speaking to you tonight first for the Congressman Rokana, whose seat this is, who is elected to this space. And he wanted very much for me to point out that in this bylaw, basically anyone can be attacked for any endorsement they've ever made without discrimination because of the timing issue, which is he didn't know this was gonna be written, therefore he couldn't make that, he couldn't 
to make a decision that took that into account. Now I want to talk to you about myself. Okay. I want to tell you, I was at all those meetings. I was fighting super hard because I was not to trigger anybody, but as a queer individual and a child, I was bullied and attacked and raped for two straight years when I was in elementary school. And I know what that feels like in 1974 to be stared with hate and be treated that way. I have two children who are both gay. And I started working with Mission High School and with Fremont High School kids starting in 2007 through 2013. And the people who came to the board to plead from Harvey Milk Day, the ones who came to talk about California Healthy Youth Act, even as recently as two years ago, and she wasn't on the board, but the ones who have been driving that movement are young API kids and students of color. They are standing together and wanting this. They want to be accepted. We came out of that space after Gwen Araujo died, literally across the highway, beaten to death and buried in a shallow grave in Yosemite. I just wanna make this clear that I didn't do this because of something that happened a long time ago. They didn't do this because of something that happened a long time ago. They did this because of what is happening now. And we as a party have a platform and a vision. We as a party come together for each other. We come together because of people who are least resourced in our communities. These same kids who are coming out, who are fighting for this, they're also trying to, you know, lower the amount of budget that we spend on the POA. They're out there, even though they work huge jobs, long hours, they're coming till two o'clock in the morning to ask for this. So I am asking you to understand that this is not sending someone to jail. This is saying who we are and who we believe in. I am asking you to look at people like my son, who, when he found out that gay marriage was okay, went to his room and sobbed for 35 minutes because he didn't even know he wanted to love openly and get married. He didn't know that was a possibility. Um, Martha? Done, no, I'm done. No, no, I, no, 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 Martha, I, I just want to give you the space if you want to finish out, you know, we're past the two minutes, but Okay. So I don't want to trigger you that you did not have the opportunity. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's just that I came to all those meetings and I know how powerful they were. And it felt really sad for those kids to fight for that and have it be denied. Thank you so much for giving me time. Up next, we have Austin and then Marie Gilmore. And then I'm going to put myself in the list. And then um, we have two others. And that should be about time. Hi, my name is Austin Tam, um, he, him pronouns, um, and as a straight ally, um, and as, as a Chinese American, um, this, this is disappointing. And, and, and the candidate does not speak for all Asian American, Asian, Asian constituency. Um, and you know, we like to, you know, the Democratic Party, we call out the Republican Party for their pro for their for their um, for them being against gay rights and this and that, but we don't hold our own people accountable just because it's a Democrat. We do not hold them accountable and support just anyone because they 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 have a Democrat underneath themselves. We you know I just want to say to the LGBTQIA plus community here and and up in my cousins and the family and the people I know um, that I see you and I hear you. I mean, I don't think we're doing that tonight. I see you, hear you. And I think it's interesting because it's very convenient when we run for office, it's very convenient that all of a sudden, like, why didn't you change your mind before until you change it, you change it all of a sudden when we, when we challenge you. Uh, it's, it's kind of like, it's, it, it is embarrassing and shameful. And as an Asian American, it is shameful because I know a lot of, in the Asian community is very conservative and they say a lot of harsh, harsh things. And I just and I just um, want to thank the the people who drafted this resolution for your courage and um, and then I see you and I hear you and I love you. Thank you. Uh, Marie Gilmore. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, I wasn't going to speak tonight, but then I decided that I would. Um, because it's very clear the pain that has been caused by these actions or non-actions. And 
I, I think what we forget is that if you're not living this day to day, you have the privilege of going home and forgetting about it or getting tired of listening to these issues because it's not your reality and not your truth. And you have no idea how it impacts people. You know, whether you're LGBTQ, um, whether you're black, whether you're a, a, a person of color, you face discrimination every single day. And if you're not in that space, you have the luxury and privilege to walk away from it and say, I'm just tired of this. I, I don't wanna hear any more about it. And I don't think you truly understand how much it hurts. Um, and you don't realize it until something of that magnitude happens to you. It's sort of like the coronavirus. Um, there are a lot of people who don't wanna get shots, but then when somebody they know um, gets sick and or dies, then they become converts. And I just have to say that we shouldn't have to wait until something happens to us or somebody that we know to become converts or allies or supporters. And I wanna echo something that has been said. I just really haven't heard a true acknowledgement of the hurt that has been caused and the, um, the apology for having caused that hurt. So thank you. Thank you, Mayor Gilmore. Great. Um, I am next on the speaker's queue and then I believe there are two folks left um, and then we will have exhausted uh, the speaker's queue. Um, so I will speak now. Um, so many people have been more eloquent. Marie was just on point. Uh, but when kids are thinking about killing themselves and you can't bring yourself to vote for curriculum or acknowledgement that would maybe help them to not kill themselves. That was the entirety of the conversation around Harvey Milk Day at the school boards. That's why I'm glad and others brought those resolutions forward and for Lily to get up here and say, I was afraid of being shot, but I couldn't bring myself to honor the person who was prominently shot in the Bay Area. Um, I can't with some of these um, finger pointing obfuscations and trying to shift. I'm never wrong. My votes don't have any impact. I don't know who's hosting a fundraiser for me. Um, David Alpert <laughs> voted against flying the pride flag and has been widely derided for that. And the wink, wink, nod of putting him on your LGBT rights page is like saying like, hey, I'm with the homos now because they get a vote, but don't worry, I'm not really with them. Um, Lily's never apologized. She's never admitted to any vote she's ever taken being wrong. I've taken wrong votes. I've evolved on issues. She's never apologized to LGBT community. No one was asking for a bunch of special holidays to be acknowledged by the school board. They were asking for Harvey Milk Day to be acknowledged. The Democratic Party has been on the right side of marriage equality since before Prop 8, whether it was pioneering on domestic partnerships or inclusion. Um, but the whole reason we had to pass a bylaw here was because too often that lived experience that Marie was talking about, that Martha was talking about, is not understood by straight allies as well-intentioned as they are. It's okay, we're a big tent. We can, ex we can acknowledge the homophobes who think that, that gay kids don't need to be protected from bullies in the schools. That's not a big tent. That's, that's a tent with a big flapping hole in the side. And that's not who we are as a party um, or who we should be as a party. Maybe it is who we are sometimes, but I think we should be better. Um, and so I would just encourage people to vote their conscience on this to remind folks we're not a, a, a body of law, we're a body of um, community leaders asking who we want to lead for LGBT students and their families and what kind of message we want to send. Um, and to really just think through like, Harvey Milk Day keeps people from killing themselves. It's stupid, it's dumb that flying the pride flag should have that impact, but sometimes there's no other support system 
when you see that and it matters, it matters to me as a 35 year old still, which is crazy. Um, even in a room like this where I'm incredibly comfortable, it makes me incredibly uncomfortable to talk about the mental health and physical and, and fear and um, shame and dread and many things in the way we were raised. And so um, I just wanted to thank everyone for your consideration. Um, and I'm sorry, I think I might've gone slightly over time. Um, still on the speakers list um, is Mel and Annie. Um, if they would still like to speak, they may decide in which order. Um, and I believe the speakers list has been exhausted. All right, I think I'll speak first so Mel can can close. Um, to, to begin, like you've heard, heard the charges today and they don't just detail actions that happened a long time ago. Yes, they, they do detail actions that happened a long time ago, but that's to show that there is a pattern that started about 10 years ago and continues to today. It started with Harvey Milk Day. It started with excluding queer literature from curriculums, but it continues with endorsing Yang Xiao in 2018, which is not a decade ago. Notably, Ms. May didn't say anything about that here when verbally addressing us, at least nothing I heard. It continues today, putting out a flyer with Guy Houston's name on it in 2021. If Ms. May genuinely does not know about Guy Houston, you really need to check whether someone is racist or sexist or homophobic before you as a candidate put out a flyer with them. And it's not a big secret that Guy Houston is a homophobe. It took me about five minutes of Googling to find it. And let's critically think about this one. Ms. May probably knew uh, about Guy Houston. And even if she didn't, she's got a, a duty to check. So to me, it looks like Ms. May has not changed. These things that we're talking about aren't a decade ago, 2018 with Yang Xiao and 2021 with an email with Guy Houston are not a decade ago. Most of her actions as mayor have been symbolic. Uh, Pride flag is symbolic. Pride march, which I was at that I didn't see her at is symbolic. So to close, I've heard, heard a few contentions that this is about being Republicans. This is not about being Republicans. This is about holding people accountable, which Republicans do not do. Accountability is showing voters that we're serious, that we care about our platform, that we care about queer people, and accountability is how we build a better party as Democrats. As Andy so eloquently said, it's how we build a party that doesn't have a fucking gaping hole in it, but we actually build a big, strong tent that does not include homophobes. Thank you, Annie. Uh, Bill, Bill uh, Quirk would like to speak again and has the right to. Yeah, I'll, I'll be very brief. I know we don't have much time. We've been here too long. Um, I just want to say, I don't see the evidence that Lily May is currently a homophobe, not based on what she's been doing. And for us to go back a decade and say, you know, it's a vote. It's a vote I never would have taken, but it's a decade ago. And she did later on, in fact, vote to recognize it, to recognize Harvey Milk Day. So, you know, we're Democrats, all right? We believe people can change. I've been working to get people under, who, who are convicted of murder a chance at parole. I can certainly agree right now. What do you keep referring to gay people as murderers for? Oh, That's you, like the stupidest thing. Fucking hell. Bill. You know, uh, hell. Andy, gay people are not murderers. Because criminals you know and gay people are what the I same. Said. Would you mute these folks? No. Andy's the host of the meeting. And also this violates our, you know, our, our, um, which policy we have, the community policy of not comparing gay people to murderers. Oh, come on. You are making me very uh, angry. Can I make a point of now. order, please? Can I am not, order, you know, my daughter is bisexual. My, my, my brother was gay before it was popular. And I've been supportive this whole time. And you are, this shows where you are, Mallory. This shows where you are. Don't be accusing, right, don't be. Enough. I'm going to say people's gonna names now, but I'm Stop saying, saying people's give names. murderers a second chance. We can certainly give Lily May a second chance. Thank Stop you. Calling, uh, uh, Chair, can I be recognized for a point of order? Yes, Lily. 
I don't know if it's proper parliamentary procedure to do this in a port of order, but I'm resigning as uh, Rocky's alternate. Um, and I want to first make clear that I'm not doing this because Rocky asked me to. But I am under, I do understand that folks from Lily May's campaign have raised issues with Rocky about the fact that I'm speaking on this item. And so I want to make clear that I'm speaking on my own behalf and not on Rocky's behalf. And to make that clear, I'm resigning. Because I would rather not be a member of this committee than not be able to speak and make my parents proud. But I think for this case, Thank you, Sally. Um, just a point of order there, um, Madam Chair, as the recording secretary. I've recorded that we've done the vacancy portions. Do we want to reopen and, and then close the vacancies and the that portion to make this change, or will you accept the change as is? Uh, I want to ask a clarifying question of Sally. Sally, you're 100 percent with this decision that you've made of resigning. Yes. No, no nothing's going to change it. No. Okay. I would like to call the question. Um, I wait. Point of order. I believe I was allowed order. to speak, and I would like to be able to do so. I'll try to make it quick. I'll allow it. Thank you. <sighs> I was able to bring the charges, but I'd also like to share a bit of my story with you um, to, to bring some humanity into this issue and to tell why it's so important. One of the things that inspired me to run for school board was my goddaughter who is transgender, who is in the Fremont Unified School District. She has suffered uh, discrimination by the administration in her schools, when she went to science camp, they did not allow her to be in the dorms with the other girls because parents were uncomfortable with that. And she went up to the superintendent, her mom did, and they still said, oh no, her mom had to come as a chaperone to science camp so that you know she could stay in a separate room with her mother. I'm sorry, but this is still happening. This is still happening. And my goddaughter is still in FUSD and she is still being discriminated against and bullied. And that is why this is so important. I would also like to tell a little bit of my wife's story. My wife is a Taiwanese American woman who was born and raised in the Bay Area, went to school in the Bay Area. She had a very conservative Taiwanese American family. She considered committing suicide rather than coming out as gay because she would rather not bring dishonor and shame upon her family being a gay Taiwanese American. Okay, when she finally moved out at the age of 18 so that she could live her truth instead of being pressured to date men, her family didn't speak to her for five years. They eventually came around and, and three years ago came to our wedding, which is wonderful. But to hear that like the community's not ready for this. Oh, the, you know, they're not ready for people to have recognition as, as human beings is just so wrong to me. I grew up in a conservative environment too. And, and I didn't come out until I was so much older because the thing that I thought could be the worst thing that could ever happen to a person is to be gay. Because I was taught that if you're gay, you're damned to hell. These things are still happening to our youth. This is not a decade ago. This is not an old tired thing. This is not something where, you know, um, it's not an issue anymore. Now we can get married. I literally got legally married the week after Donald Trump was elected because I thought that they would overturn Ogerfell. And I cried and I cried because I thought, there go my rights. There go my rights. And so I really would ask all of you to please vote for these charges because all the harm that it has done to our LGBTQ plus children and FUSD from the decisions that were made by now Mayor May have not, that harm has not been equaled at out at all by the, by the, you know, resolutions that had no effect that were just, you know, symbolic, symbolic resolutions and votes have done nothing to reverse the harm that has been done. Thank you. Uh, I have a point of order. That was not a point of order. That was further in the argument, which is fine. But I think at this point, Lily May deserves equal time. No, she does not. 
I, no, I, she I'd like to point out that I'd actually no, called the question and I graciously allowed the previous speaker to finish up their statements and get it out because I don't want that negative energy going in here. But just to reiterate, I have called the question. I would like for this to move forward and I feel that other people do support this movement. That is correct. Bell was on the speaker's list the same way that a member Quirk was on the speaker's list as members of this committee. But now that I've heard- They were entitled to finish the speaker's list. Mayor May and Mayor Quinto are not members of this committee and are not entitled to engage in this part of the meeting. They do not have standing to make points of order. A motion has been made and called and seconded. And members of the vote on the issue. Have an opportunity to speak. We will first vote on the motion, which is not debatable to call the question. Did we hear a second on the motion to call the question? Second. Second. Annie Caruga. Annie Caruga, second. Okay, and um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, many eyes. All opposed? Aye. Aye. Okay, many eyes. All opposed? Uh, I see, I hear no verbal opposition. I see two hands raised that are members no of the committee. So the ayes have it. Any abstentions? So the ayes have it. Any abstentions? Um, great. So now we need to vote on the motion. Uh, per the outline we sent, we will vote by show of hands. All hands, please lower. A uh, point of information. Can Todd please mute yourself? Thank you. I couldn't hear anything like Andy just said. Can Todd please mute yourself? Andy. Yeah, I just muted. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry about that. It's, I've been muted. Thank you. Okay. Per the agreed to rules of this meeting, we will now conduct the vote. All in favor of upholding the charges against. Uh, Mayor May, voting members only. That's elected members of this committee. Your alternate may vote only if the elected member is not here. Uh, John Sibyl, I know I have to count you twice. Point of information, um, we're raising our hands, right? Yes, please raise your hand you. to vote in favor of the charges. Andy, are you doing, is that a formal motion by you? Sorry, what, Karina? Is that a formal motion by you to up to uh, in motion support of the committee? Because it's an item before the committee. Um, yes, I guess I'm making a motion to uphold the charges, but I'm just calling the question per Victoria's motion to actually record the vote. Okay, okay, um, great. So we're, we're doing the, we, we have, yes, what I, I have, the question was called and motion passed. And now we're, you're moving on to the next step. I'm not recognizing any points of order. There's no points of order that can possibly be correct during this process. Um, I'm just gonna confirm really quickly that all the hands that are raised are in fact voting members. Ken Drake, Victor Aguilar, Wendy. What, what are, are you doing the point of on the calling the question or are you the motion that you've put forward? And then who was the second if there was a motion, Andy? The motion was made by, um, I guess myself in the second was Annie Corgi. Annie Zaruga. Annie, is that correct? Yes. Okay, thank you. So, okay, thank you. 17, 18, 19. 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. Okay, I have 28 hands raised. I'm gonna acknowledge that that number should be 29 because John and Sybil Smith have independent votes that are on together. Um, and uh, I'm confirming that Andy, the alternates I see voting, their members are not also on the meeting. Andy, um, I received a message in the chat that his battery was dying down, but um, the Honorable Al Alex Lee is in favor of the charges against me. 
I have a picture of that, so I have yep. you know a few left. Yeah, uh, I saw that too. That another 30? another okay. point is there's a Todd eighty twenty who says they are trying to raise their hand but they can't and they're in the chat. That's thirty one. Thirty one. Okay. Is there anyone on the phone? Okay. Is there anyone on the phone? Okay, so 31 in favor, please lower your hands. Actually, I can lower all the hands. I always forget that I can do that. All right, all in, um, all in opposition, please raise your hand. If you're in opposition to the motion, please raise your hand. Andy, the Congressman Rokana votes in opposition to the motion and I am out. Good night, everybody, I resign. Um, I see two votes in opposition to the motion. I will ask again if any members wish to vote in opposition to the motion, including the members who are on, who spoke in opposition to the motion, but are not raising their hands. I just wanna make sure everyone has a chance. Okay, that's three opposed. Are there any other members wishing to vote? Um, seeing none, are there any members who wish to abstain? If you wish to abstain, please raise your hand. I see one abstention. I see two abstentions. For a process as consequential as this, Mayor May deserved an opportunity to respond to the allegations after everyone spoke. She was that not was not in our point, our, our rules for the, the meeting, which were agreed to or in reviewed by the board. So no. Um, there are two points of opposition, two, two abstentions. Are there any other abstentions? Has anyone failed to be able to register their vote? Seeing none, the motion carries as it requires 60%. And whatever these numbers were, were much higher than 60%. Yeah, so, um, so I, I re have recorded 31 in support of the charges, three um, against the charges and two abstentions. So um, it's a 60% thresh. It's a minimum quorum of um, 16 members at the beginning of, and I have registered at least 36 members. So we did in fact have a quorum. I did say, call that earlier. Um, it's 60% of the votes casted. So 30 is that number. Yes, that's a 91.1% margin, which is larger than 60%. Um, with that, the meeting has um, the motion. The, agenda. the motion passes. The motion passes. Thank you, Recording Secretary. Um, I have a question. Question, question first. Uh, Donald and Sully have their hands up. Is that they're still up because of a vote? That's from a vote. I believe that our agenda has um, new business at the end, and I just wanted to see if I could be recognized briefly as a member of the public. We do not have new business on the agenda. Okay, well then I'd ask for special dispensation from the chair to clarify my earlier comments about my resignation. I remove my motion to adjourn. <laughs> uh, yes, Sully, please. Um... Thank you. So just to clarify, because I want to make sure that no one's confused, um, Rocky was going to not vote because he has to run the endorsement process for 8020, which is entirely reasonable, and I was very happy to not vote on the matter. But when I spoke, I understand that people from Lily May's campaign expressed concerned that I was speaking uh, as his alternate on the matter. And rather than put him in an uncomfortable position, I resigned because I would rather make my parents proud than not be a member of this committee. But I can assure you that I will be back. Um, and yeah, don't worry about me. And don't be mad at Rocky, not him. Thank you, Sully. 
Robin, do you want to restate your motion? Uh, yes, Madam Chair, I motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? I'll second that. That's Victoria. Yep. Okay. Everybody, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for speaking your truth. And um, for so many of you, a lot of conversations could have triggered. Just be very gentle. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to your children. Take care of yourself. Um, I know I was triggered quite a bit by the conversations, but this isn't about me. This is about the rest of you. Um, do we need to vote or are we okay? We're, we're good. Okay.